Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with geeky sparkles in this video, but we're going to talk about the uh, the morning after the news that IGN bought up a whole bunch of gaming sites. And this is yet another blow against gaming journalism as we've known it. But we have known better gaming journalism. I love this. I love this post by Hominus Nocturna when gaming journalism was about video games, the good old times. It was Electronic Gaming Monthly. It was uh, the old PlayStation magazine. It was GamePro. Uh, these are these are magazines I read. These were people who played video games, who started publications. In many cases, they were fans. They were fan publications. They were kind of like zines, and then they got picked up um, by a publisher. I think uh, in the case of EGM, uh, let's see, was it was it Ziff Davis came along later? But I think they had another publishing group in there that, that uh, kind of got them out to all the stores, all the convenience stores and the Walden books and, you know, kids like myself who wanted to know about the newest uh, Genesis games or about the Super Nintendo, we would pick these books up and read them cover to cover every month, uh, along with comic books and a lot of other things that are antiquated <laughs> now. But these were better days. Yeah, because back then I don't remember any political hot takes, but uh, fast forward to today, we've got sites like The Gamers, uh, The Gamer, I Miss When Trolls Used to Care, and uh, Hi, I'm an Idiot Who's Mad About Everything in Video Games Except the Layoffs, and uh, this, this little nugget here from last year, Hogwarts Legacy Made Us Ignore Transphobia, so what's next? Yeah, The Gamer was leading the charge against the, uh, the bigoted gamers, and you know, these gaming publications, these, these websites have brigaded against gamers for the better part of a decade. And now they are facing extinction. So we're going to we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, the coping and the seething and how things are going to change. And look, I want to be clear, I'm not uh, rooting for everybody to lose their jobs. There are some truly awful people working in video game journalism. Uh, there are also some good people working in video game journalism. I think the the good people, the talented people, the people that have built uh, a support system. I think they'll be fine. They'll transition to either, you know, uh, doing YouTube or podcasts or something. They will do something because they're talented. Uh, there are just a lot of people in this space. And it's not just video game news, right? It's it's comic book news. It's pop culture news. There are a lot of remoras. There are a lot of parasites that have used pop culture and nerd them to, to uh, you know, get themselves, uh, you know, a foot in the door hoping to work in one of these industries to get themselves to like Hollywood or whatever, whatever has the most influence because in their head, they want to be rich and famous, right? So a lot of people have gotten into these industries just because they're hoping to move on to something else. Some people got stuck there. Uh, comic books, especially we had a lot of people get into comics thinking that was a shortcut to Hollywood and, and that whole thing has imploded. And I do believe it's the same with video games. I think there are people that, you know, kind of fantasized about working in the video game industry and or they like to play video games and they had a journalism degree or whatever. And, and so they got into games journalism. But once upon a year, it wasn't a profession necessarily. It was a, a passion for people. And again, it was it functioned more like a zine. You had people who are passionate about video games, talking about video games in a time when video games weren't as big as they are now, in a time when people didn't take video games as deathly serious as they are now. They just wanted to play video games. But, um, you know, all this stuff is spilling into the culture war. We've got uh, Grums put out today that he got doxxed, apparently. He's claiming. Um, I need to look into it a little bit more, but he is claiming that the uh, former EIC of Escapist game and pop culture journalist, uh, Nick Calandra, has weaponized a Discord server and got him doxxed. And again, this is not cool. Uh, if that is actually going on, not cool. We should not be doing that even to the quote-unquote other side. I think it's stupid. It's too much. It's just video games, but it's also not. There's a, there's a lot more at stake here. So we're going to talk about this, do kind of a post-mortem on uh, what I think is going to be one of the final blows against video game journalism. And it's, it's just an algorithm change. It's apathy and AI killed video game journalism as we've known it. And we'll talk about the coping and the seething and people you know, pointing out that YouTubers can't do it on their own because they need games journals because uh, they need to get their news from 
these news outlets, but I, I hate to break it to you. A lot of people are getting their news from like Twitter now. Twitter is actually a lot more efficient. And uh, they're getting their news from interviews. They're actually going out and interviewing people who work in the industry directly. Uh, we're seeing this in comics, too. People are getting pissed off, so pissed off that John Delarose is going out there and interviewing comic book professionals because they should be talking to him because he's he's just a YouTube chud. You're not supposed to talk to to those people. But he's had like freaking Eric Larson on. He's had uh, Dan DiDio on. He just had Todd McFarlane on. And I'm like, yeah, I think I think that the stigma of of being just a YouTuber or being a, a wrong thinker or whatever, I think that's going away because the people in the, in the industry that want to stay in the industry realize that that's where the influence actually is. Uh, it's not it's not with uh, Kotaku. It's not with Polygon. In fact, in a lot of cases, they do more damage to your brand. So they are reaching out to YouTubers and podcasters. And, and you know, gaming journalism will live on. It will just live on in a different form. And some of the people will make the jump. Some of them will. Uh, some of them, I think, are talented enough to do it. I've, I've seen some of these people uh, do YouTube. I've, I've heard some of their podcasts, and some of these people will be fine. They don't need to work for these publications. But I'd say like 90% of the journos working in games journalism now are going to get snapped. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. God, we're into it really far. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Go out to Clownfish Gaming. That is our gaming channel with gaming news and gameplay videos. Uh, go out to Indiegogo. We actually put up a campaign for Shadowbinders Volume 1, 2, and 3. We're going to do a reprint of 1 and 2, and it's your last chance to get uh, 3 before it goes off to the printer this summer. And uh, yeah, this is our webcomic turned graphic novel series. If you like Final Fantasy, you'll probably like Shadowbinders. Uh, we have a lot of fun with it. And you can pick up some other stuff as well. Uh, we've got some pins and uh, different merch in there, guys. So check that out. That's on uh, Indiegogo. I'll put a link in the description, pin it in the comments section. So yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about this. This is, uh, coming from Forbes is Paul Tassie, who's, who's basically writing a eulogy. He said that, you know, the purchase yesterday, uh, IGN, which is Ziff Davis, which, you know, all this stuff goes back to Ziff Davis, right? But they bought Eurogamer, GamesIndustry.biz, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, VG247, uh, and then shares in outside Xbox, Digital Foundry, Nintendo Life, Push Square, Pure Xbox, and Time Extension. Now, these um, these sites I don't think have to answer to IGN directly. I think that they're going to kind of be their own thing. The move has already resulted in significant redundancy layoffs of acclaimed journalists across the brands as they are absorbed into the mega site. There are too many damn video game websites. I'm going to be honest. Like, again, back in the day, we had a handful of video game magazines and a handful of websites. IGN was actually one of those websites. They were one of the early websites. But, uh, you know, Destructoid was another one. Um, some of these sites aren't around anymore. But, like, we don't need as many websites as we have to cover this stuff. I I'm just being honest. And, and websites today are, are antiquated. Most of them are antiquated. And Google AI search has made them redundant. Um, while consolidation, he says, is generally not great in any industry, games journalism is especially struggling, and moves like this are only going to make things worse. Mid-level or smaller sites are already fighting against YouTube and Twitch, and for visibility against Google's increasingly actively hostile search policies, which now include AI ripoffs of their articles as of last week. Yes, uh, I told you guys this was happening. I do run multiple websites. Our traffic has been completely decimated, and um, I can imagine that a lot of other people's traffic has been decimated as well. For those of you who don't know, if you go out and do a Google search, for most things now, you're going to get an AI snippet encapsulating what Google thinks the answer is to your question. So if you're asking how to beat a level, in the new Zelda game, it'll tell you specifically. In fact, some of the some of the new AI uh, fanciness coming from Microsoft will actually tell you how to beat the game in real time. The AI chatbot will guide you through, like Minecraft. I saw a demo of that, and it's, it's kind of frightening. So yeah, video game news websites, video game walkthroughs are going to be a thing of the past. Uh, what we're going to be left with are pundits. We're going to be left with people who have opinions on video games. And that that's kind of where things are going. And now you can have opinions. Uh, you know, I'm not saying your opinions are correct or incorrect, but baiting gamers, which a lot of these websites are doing, uh, is never a good thing because you are 
chasing off your audience. And I don't think the gamer gives a crap anymore. I think they know that they're on limited time. They're, uh, you know, I, I just think they know they are. They're, they're writing multiple articles this week, attacking the chuds uh, because there's been some backlash over Assassin's Creed Shadows. Uh, you know, these are supposed to be parody articles, but they're beyond parody. I, I love this one. Hi, I'm an idiot who's mad about everything in video games except the layoffs. Basically, why are people getting upset about all the stuff going on in video games, but they're not getting upset enough about the layoffs. Well, because a lot of the studios that are getting shut down produced content by people that were anti-gamer. Not not in every case. You know, Hi-Fi Rush was pretty good. But I'm just saying, there are a lot of studios getting shut down that were pushing agendas, and a lot of the people associated with some of these studios were anti-gamer. They were, you know, not giving players what they wanted. And... Players are rejecting a lot of this stuff. Now, I cannot say whether or not Assassin's Creed Shadow is going to be, uh, Shadows is going to be a big hit or not. I have no idea. Some people are going to buy it just because it's Assassin's Creed. I have no idea. But there are several, several examples just in the last year or two of AAA studios imploding under their own weight and hubris. And that's basically what all of this is, is hubris. Again, the original video game journalists were just gamers who like to talk about video games and they like to talk about the business side of video games and they like to show people what was coming next. Um, then somehow it became an entire industry, <laughs> you know, because of those guys. And a lot of those guys got pushed out a long time ago. They're not even in it anymore. Nobody really remembers what EGM was. And it was, it was like, it was like the IGN of its day. It was IGN on paper, but without all the hot takes, right? And it was fantastic. And if I could, if I could buy the rights to whatever is left of it, I'd do it in a heartbeat. I'm, I'm just saying, I would. I'd try to bring it back. But yeah, the people that are in the video game industry now, a lot of them are activists. A lot of them are clout chasers. They don't really care about video games that much. Or if they do, it's secondary to getting their opinions across. And that's, I'll say it. It's on both sides of the aisle. You got some people out there, and we've got people like Matt Walsh and, and Ben Shapiro. You're trying to weigh in on video games and anime and stuff. It's like, seriously, dude, you don't you don't watch this stuff. But again, I could say the same of of a lot of people working in, in games journalism right now. They they just weren't. It wasn't really about the games, right? Uh, yeah. So again, back to Tassie's article. He said this is the latest move. There are other similar ones in the past. Fandom bought Gamespot, Giant Bomb, and even Metacritic back in 2022. The Gamer Network has over a dozen publications, including Destructoid, The Escapist, Game Pure, and Twin Fam Again, there are way too many of these sites. There's some big name sites that are relatively standalone. Polygon seems like the healthiest, perhaps, while something like Kotaku seems constantly on death's door with a skeleton staff trying to fight against its poor private equity management. Geo Media doesn't care about Kotaku. They were just, they bought these websites cheap and they just wanted to juice them. And now, I mean, the fact that they're telling their their writers to stick to uh, to to stick to game guides and not cause problems, but then you got like Alyssa Mercante out there causing all kinds of problems and probably uh, probably close to getting them into another lawsuit just makes a case for them to to get sold. Uh, he said there are major brands like the New York Times and Forbes in the gaming space covering the massive industry. It makes it harder for smaller sites to compete. Yeah, it's true. Even there, there are problems. Washington Post. Cold its entire gaming vertical. Uh, yeah, they did. They didn't. They have a whole other. I think they had a whole other site. And then we had uh, it was a waypoint was one. And uh, yeah, they're just like they're just not interested in it. Okay, so here's where it gets interesting. There is also the public war against game journalists by in part the anti woke crowd who believes the progressive leaning outlets are going extinct because of allegedly activist takes. I, they're anti-gamer. I mean, regardless of where they are politically, there are a lot of takes out there that are anti-gamer. You've literally got sites out there calling the time of death on gamers and calling for gamers to be problematic. And even sites like the New York Times, they're trying to, to tie Fortnite to the alt-right. I mean, seriously, like a lot of these websites are anti-gamer. They don't like gamers. They really don't like gamers. There are also console fanboys who are constantly ripping outlets for allegedly favoring one piece of hardware or another. Doesn't matter. The PC master race already won, guys. 
uh, or taking them to task for inconsistent opinions across dozens of writers who have diverse viewpoints. That's actually true. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you look at a website, you got to be like, okay, is this, is this the site's opinion or is it just a writer, a contributor on this site having a stupid take? So in short, when you bring up the layoffs and general destruction of the industry, the reaction from gamers is often good. They deserve it. Yeah, well, whose fault is that, Paul? I'm not trying to be a dick. But whose fault is that? They don't trust gaming journalists. And there are good ones out there. I'm not saying that there aren't good ones out there. But what we hear about mostly are gaming journals going to war with gamers, usually over politics or something stupid, you know. And, um, yeah, this is, this is just, there, there, there are not going to be many tears shed. I'm sorry. Uh, you, you could shut every video game website down tomorrow and the vast majority of gamers will be like, eh, okay, whatever. I haven't been there in 10 years. Um, he says, it's hard to see this getting better. I feel for my colleagues who are enduring this sort of thing essentially every month at this point. And I feel like the recent Google AI push, especially as the Mad Max dust storm on the horizon. Yes. I said, yeah, you need to go to YouTube or Twitch. Good luck with that. It's very crowded. Um, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, a lot of people out there being like, well, what are the, what are the YouTubers going to do if we don't write articles for them to read? I'm like, they'll do a journalism. There are people out there that are doing journalism without reading articles. Uh, giving their hot takes without reading articles. And like I said, it's getting to a place where a lot of the people that make this stuff, they're going directly to YouTubers. They're bypassing websites. There's no point in going to a website. There's absolutely no point. It's over, you know, and I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But uh, again, it's, it's, it's really hard to uh, uh, muster up any sympathy in, in a lot of ways because the writing has been on the wall for a very long time and a lot of these people have been very antagonistic toward gamers for years. I'm like, why are you doing this? If you hate gamers so much, why are you doing this? Why are you writing about games? Why are you constantly wading into it on Twitter? You clearly don't care that much about it or you're stuck there. And the same thing with comics. We have a lot of people working in the comic book industry that are stuck in comics. They wanted to go to Hollywood. They wanted to get into television. They wanted to do movies. They wanted to, you know, I think a lot of people working in video game journalism, they wanted to write for the New York Times. And they thought, well, if I get my feet wet writing about stupid shit like video games, eventually I'll be able to work my way up to, you know, interviewing the vice president or something, right? And that's not how it works. That's really not how it works. Um, you know, it's not like back in the day, if you work for a newspaper, you start out writing the obituaries and that's the thing. You start writing the obits and then you kind of work your way up to, uh, you know, doing, uh, you know, maybe uh, uh, wrangling the AP news stories. And then you work your way into, you know, covering kind of local stories and then you work your way up. Um, that's not how this works anymore. Basically, it's it's like you have to wherever you start. I think a lot of times that's where you wind up now. Um, so if you want to be, uh, taken seriously as a political correspondent, then you need to start out as a political correspondent and just a lot of gaming journals, I don't think really have, have what it takes to be a political correspondent for whatever reason. But, um, yeah, gaming journalism is getting weird. This is, uh, this is Curtis loves video games. A lot of people, uh, says this is weird. It's very, very weird. So anyway. I think I'm going to wrap this up. I don't know what else to say. I really don't know what else to say. I miss Electronic Gaming Monthly. That's what I'm going to say. I miss it very much. I miss that era of gaming journalism. And, uh, you know, it just it, that does not work online. Because online you need outrage to mine drama to get hits. And if that's the only reason people are going to your website, they're going there for the outrage and not the video game coverage. What's the point? What's the point? I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.